Hello, this is Jeff Neville for Selective Imagery. This is going to be a fun little video. I don't normally do product videos, um, but this is going to be a, uh, a preview of the Godox Lux Senior Flash. My first impressions, and we'll actually try it out on my Raleigh and see if it actually goes off. My Raleigh Flex uh, Twin Lens Reflex Camera and hopefully everything will work according to plan but you will be finding out live with me whether it works or doesn't work and we'll get into the specifics and I uh, recorded some video basically from my Mac studio in my office area a little convoluted but uh, hopefully uh, decent enough where you get the information that you need decide if you want to make this a flash that you add to your kit and I think you will like it. Hello, this is Jeff Neville for Selective Imagery. Today we're going to do something a little different. I recently ordered a new flash unit that just came out from Godox. So we're going to do a little unboxing video here. I'm going to talk about the flash. I'm going to talk about uh, the specs a little bit, who it's for, where you would use it, where you might not want to use it and uh, a few of the cons that I have with it and this is just from a spec standpoint obviously I'm going to unbox it right now I have not tried it out so you're going to see it the same time I do so this is a Godox Lux Senior it's being sold as a retro flash meaning that it's ideally suited for older cameras such as rangefinder cameras or in what I'm going to try it with first is going to be and when with my Raleigh flex Ta -da. now this is the normal flash and it does work on my Raleigh Flex. This is called the Raleigh Flash and it uses the P25 bulbs which it meant press photographer bulbs because these cameras were used a lot by press photographers. So on the Raleigh Flex you have two different sync modes. You have and the same thing like on brands that were made that kind of copied the Raleigh, Raleigh Flex twin lens reflex format such as Yashica and many others is you have two sync modes which is which is down here there's a lever and in one position it's M which you use for flash bulbs X sync is used for electronic flash so the only way I can buy these bulbs right now is through eBay very cost prohibitive and I said gee you know when this new Lux Senior Flash came out, I says that would be perfect to replace this guy. In the long term it would save me money, it'd be a lot more convenient, and we'll see how and if it works out. So let's let's unbox things here. Get my camera put down here on the desk. And we will open up the box. We have a microfiber cloth. Okay. And the flash unit is sitting, sitting cradled in foam. So here is the flash unit. second so this is the front okay you have an optical sensor here mm -hmm. you have your your hot shoe here now this is not like a conventional flash that you would put on let's say a d850 or a z6 or whatever that's not really what this flash is meant for it will work on it but this is not an ITTL or TTL flash. It does have an automatic mode which only works up to four meters which is like 13.2 feet and that's it. Then you have to go to manual mode 
And in terms of determining your settings in manual mode from the back of the unit, you're only going to be able to calculate things up to four meters. So this flash is really, really meant when you're shooting portraits, you're shooting at 13 feet away, which on those older cameras and a TLR uh, or rangefinder, and that's that's pretty much normal. Now, can you shoot at farther distances? Yes, you can, but you're not going to have the benefit of being able to see what your settings are going to be by using the dials on the back, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But basically, when you we will turn around to the front here. I will open up the front. And this is how it looks. You have a red button here at the top. You push that. And the bulb pops out. And unlike my other flash, you're not replacing bulbs. Okay, the bulb pops out. And you have what they call... Uh, referred to mostly as a beauty dish is what people would call it nowadays. So you would fan fan this out. Trying to do this while shooting the video is a pain in the neck. But you would fan this out. And this looks like something from the 50s, does it not? It is really, really cool. Really, really cool. And uh, I'm sure you'd get people that would like to sit and get their picture taken uh, while they're looking at an old-style flash like this. So, a little bit on the specs. It has a guide number of 14 at ISO 100, and that guide number is in, in meters. So, I'm going to convert things to what we're used to in the United States. In feet, it's 45.93 feet at ISO 100. It weighs a little over 8 ounces. It'll work in anywhere from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit temperature range. And on a full charge, you're going to get 150 flashes at full power. Now, you can dial this thing down on the back. Um, we'll get into some of the controls. Let me collapse the collapse this and close it. Now, before a, cre a key thing, do never never try to just fold this down and close it. You have to push the bulb in manually first. Otherwise, you risk smashing that bulb and breaking it. Make sure you push the bulb in first, and don't push it in when the bulb is hot. Okay, you don't want to burn your skin on it. Otherwise, you better make sure you're wearing a set of gloves. So if you look at the back of the camera, and I'm going to get something I can use to point to, you have a switch here, S1 off and S2. So off, the flash is off. S1, this shot can be used as a slave. So if you put... Let's say uh, a flash that looks like this on your camera as your master. Once it sees the flash fire, then that bulb will fire on this unit. Now S1 is when you're using a flash head that isn't doing a pre-flash. It's just going to fire once, provide the light, then this will react accordingly. The S2 position is if you're using, like some cameras allow you to use a pre-flash for red eye reduction. If you're using a pre-flash, you have to put that switch in the S2 position. So it basically ignores the pre-flash and then only re uh, reacts to the second main flash that's illuminating the subject. So that's what that switch is for. You know, then you have your normal uh, flash test button. If it's uh, green, you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. If it's red, you're not ready to go. Then you have a switch down here, which is, I'll get closer. 
which is um, it's an off auto mode or manual mode and like I said auto mode and you can see on that uh, label on this interior ring here auto mode is only if you're at ISO 100 okay at f 2.8 and then it's going to only be automatic up to four meters distance anything other than that or if you want manual control you're going to have to put the switch in the manual position now because i have the flash uh, the front of it closed the indicator light is going to show red because it's, it's it's not capable of taking a picture right now and right now I'm in, in manual mode. So how would you, you would use this? You have it, this, this little arrow right here. And that is basically for adjusting your power. So the arrow at the top in this outer dial, you turn it so you have full power, half power, quarter power. Okay, so you have seven levels. Full power down the 164th power. Okay, then you have this other uh, ring that's called the uh, meter panel. This area here is called the meter panel. You have your f-stops here and you have meters and little tick marks. And then you have your ISO range which is down here. So right now I've got the camera set for full power. Okay. So if I have it on full power and then I adjust and I'm saying I'm shooting at ISO 100 and I'm shooting at, at uh, let's say two meters away which is basically six and a half feet if I want to shoot at full power I'm going to be at f5.6 now I could I could choose any of those other f-stops and those will correspond with a power setting so full power is 5.6, half power is F4. So if I want to shoot it at half at F4, then I have to rotate that out, out excuse me, outer dial. So the F4, I mean, so the half power mark lines up with that with that down arrow. And that's how you would set it. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Now, one of the negatives I have is that this, this scale on here only goes to 4 meters, which is 13.2 feet. So what if I'm shooting a, a subject that's 20 feet away? Will the flash still work? Absolutely. But what you have to do then is in the manual, and I just printed out a piece of paper, you have a couple tables you're going to have to look at to calculate what your f-stop is going to be for a given distance and uh, it's just a little more complicated so basically if you're using this flash you're staying with that four meter guideline you don't have to look at a piece of paper you could do everything from the back of the flash now I wish it went up to like uh, you know six meters so you'd be like close to that 20 feet mark but uh, most of the time if you're doing you know headshots or, or close-ups of people you you can be you know 10 12 feet away so you're not going to really have a major issue I'm just letting you know that you're limited by the the uh, scaling that's on the back of that flash unit so what what else do you get in the box so I'm gonna remove the foam so you get a nice little bag to put your flash in I keep dropping everything off my lap here I apologize you get a manual You get your triggering cable, which you're going to need for a lot of retro cameras, your PC sync cable. 
and then you have your USB charging cable. Now the battery in this flash, it's another one of my slight complaints, is not removable. So if this battery ever fails, you're going to need to buy a new flash. It's not a removable battery. It's 3.7 volts. It's 1,700 milliamp hours. At full power, you'll get 500 flashes from this. That's if you're always using full power. And um, so it's USB charged, and and basically, you know, if <laughs> if you're going to shoot more than 150 shots in a session, you're going to have to buy a second flash. Uh, you're not going to be able to just pop out the battery and put in another charged battery. So, you know, that may be a disadvantage for some people, but not for most. Let's put it that way. Uh, the recycle time on the flash is uh, typically less than three seconds. And uh, the focal length is it can facilitate up to a, um, it's, it's all, all the specs are based on you're using a 28 millimeter lens. So I kind of explained who this flash is for. This is for somebody putting it on an old camera. Now you could use it as a slave with a modern flash on your camera body. But it's more for people like me who have collected collected cameras and we want to get away from having to use flash bulbs. And it's it's perfect. It's going to be perfect for that. I, I really can't wait to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my setup in a minute on my Raleigh. And, uh, and we will test it out live and see if it works. So I have the flash unit and I have my rally flex mounted on a really old flash bracket which I had to kind of move it up a little bit here to have room so I could look down the viewfinder and have clearance and uh, you know here's my sync cable plugged in I'll get into what this little gadget is here in a minute <laughs> but basically we're gonna see when I push the shutter button right here if this puppy goes off and there we go it sinks it works it's happy I'm thrilled to death I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this this is gonna be this is gonna be fun my friend like I said Bob from Bob our photos bought one of these flash units really at the same time for his Yashica we're gonna go out and be shooting black and white film and using this flash and testing it out and I'll let you know how it goes. Maybe a while before I get to it, but I'll try it out on, a, on an SLR, uh, digital SLR camera and, uh, or my mirrorless camera and see what happens. Um, but it's great, you know. There we go. And you can see the, the green ready light on the back of the flash. So to say that this flash unit isn't cool, it's, well, what's the old saying? The cat's meow. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Godox, you, you really, you came up with something unique, something different. Some people say you just copy what's out there. This isn't a copy of, of anything that's out there. You went back in time, my friends, and you put together something that's gonna be a lot of fun for us uh, folks that shoot vintage cameras so I thank you very much for that so I will come back in a second and we'll continue to continue the discussion um, oh, I'll describe what what this item here uh, because this flash works with Nikon Fuji Olympus a lot of different brands um, what I chose to do is this is a cold shoe and I'll explain what that is in a second. So what I did was I bought a, a hot shoe mount that has the PC sync cable built in to plug into a camera. And this was for Nikon cameras. Um, it's made by Impact. I got it at B&H Photo. It's like $14, $15. Model number SCS-MPC. So just slide the flash unit on that. 
And uh, I'm going to turn the flash off and remove it here. So I will show you, okay, there's your, there's your hot shoe. Now that round circle in the middle is what they call the, the X sink. Okay. On, on old flashes, you really only had one uh, electrical point of contact. Maybe two at the most, but, uh, and, um, so that's basically allowing me to just put that flash on here and use it. Now, a very, very important thing, and I'm going to be moving around a lot here, uh, so bear with me. You got to put stuff down, pick stuff up. And it says this in the manual for the flash, but I'm going to, you know, reiterate it and tell you now, live. This is an old Petri rangefinder camera. Okay. Look at the top of it. You go, oh, there's a hot shoe there. No, this is what's called a cold shoe. There are no electrical contacts on that. And you'll find that on some of the Yashica TLRs. Now, when you look through the manual for this new flash unit, which has electrical contact, It'll tell you, if you're mounting it on a cold shoe, which is what I would have been doing if I put it on that flash bracket without that extra part that I bought, the pin's going to short out on the metal case of the camera and the flash isn't going to work. So to be able to mount this on this camera and have it work, you're going to have to slide a, a piece of paper or put a piece of electrical tape or something in that cold shoe mount so that contact does not touch the metal and then it will work fine and my I, my friend did that uh, with his uh, Yashica um, he has a, a cold shoe mount on the side of his twin lens reflex camera and he put some uh, I think he had to end up ended up having to use good old-fashioned duct tape because that sticks well enough where it won't slide around when you're trying to put the flash in. And it did insulate the contact and using the uh, sink cable, like I said, that comes with this flash. It plugs into the side. I'll, I'll get this close to the camera. The connection on the top is where the USB-C cable plugs in to charge the battery. And a little small opening below that is where you plug in your PC sync cable. One end plugs into the flash, one end plugs into the camera. Now, so it should, it should work with this old, old Petri camera, but we will move forward a few years. Here we have an old Minolta AL-F rangefinder camera, and here's the hot shoe. See the contact in the middle? That's your X flash sink. Your X flash sink. So I could take that um, flash. Just mount it on the hot shoe. I don't have to use the PC sync cable. And it should it should fire and sync up fine with this old camera body. And this camera is from, let me see if I can find the information. Um, this, this is circa 1967. The Petri that I showed you that had the cold mount on it was from 1962. So these are the kinds of cameras. Something like this. Something like this. That's for what this flash is for.
and I just showed you that it works on an old style camera. So that should make a lot of you guys wanting to run out and buy this. And it's uh, $119. And uh, I'm not getting paid to talk about this flash unit or anything. Nobody's giving me any money. Nobody's sponsoring me. Which is great. If I didn't think it's worth talking about, I, I wouldn't even do the video. I wouldn't waste my time. I'm not going to just bash something if it doesn't work. I just wouldn't talk about it. Um, and I'm just going to remind everybody what this flash is not. I'm, I'm going to try that out on a, on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, which typically you'd be using one of these. And I shoot Nikon, so this is a <coughs> excuse me, Speedlight SB700. Okay, this thing, this thing tilts. Okay, it swivels. That other flash, it doesn't tilt. Unless you take it off the off the bracket and hold it, it ain't tilting, it ain't swiveling. It's not that complex. It is neat that you can adjust the power settings though. So you have choices of different f-stops depending on what uh, power setting uh, you want to use. And I think that's a great thing. But, you know, obviously the, the back is not as, it's not, you know, modernized like this uh, with the LCD panel. And, and that might be a good upgrade for them at some point in time if they wanted to make another model that uh, is more tailored and had uh, TTL or ITTL capabilities. You know, hey, there might be a market for that. Who knows? But I just wanted to share this with you, and um, you know, if you find it interesting, you know, check it out. Go to their website. Um, they actually show that flash being used on a on a Rally Flex, like I just did for you. Uh, but it definitely would work, you know, on on the rangefinder cameras as well, and look pretty cool on one of these, and. Uh, you're an old timer like me. It takes you back when you were young and your mom and dad were taking pictures of you with the old fashioned flash units that had the bulbs and they fanned out the beauty dish, dish just like this flash model does. So it's definitely retro cool. It looks very functional. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Liked it, give me a thumbs up, share it, make some comments. And uh, until next time, as I say, enjoy life, capture some of it.